Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is basically an introduction to the ArrayList class. I'm going to go ahead and open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com. Select begin, and I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the uh, ArrayList introduction. Now, a standard Java single dimensional array has many shortcomings and limitations. Now, the most notable of which is the fact that it cannot grow in size. The Arrays class, which is different than the ArrayList, but the Arrays class has been around since almost the beginning of Java and contains a zillion overloaded methods that you can perform certain actions on a standard single dimensional array. Now, I would not recommend taking the time to learn the methods of the Arrays class. Just know that it is there and it works great with good old regular arrays. Okay, so the ArrayList class is my preferred choice over a standard array any day. Just the sheer convenience of being able to add and remove elements from an ArrayList on the fly is one of its coolest features. Out of the many methods in the ArrayList class, uh, basically the add method and the remove method are the ones that can easily add and remove individual elements from the ArrayList object. Now there's a whole bunch of uh, methods and I'll we'll be going over all of the methods in the ArrayList class in future tutorials. There are three basic ways to declare and instantiate uh, an ArrayList object and each of them are really straightforward. So I'll call the first one the legacy declaration because this is how it was done before Java supported generics. Okay. So here's our declaration statement right here. ArrayList is our class, which is ArrayList type, and then a reference variable, and then we're assigning that to the uh, reference to a new instance of an ArrayList object. Right? Fairly simple there. And then we're invoking the add method here, and in this particular case, I'm passing it, uh, you know, a string object, standard string here, string literal, which will be get put into a string object, by the way. And then I'll add uh, this string literal world, and I'll add a 155. And what will happen here is this will actually get auto-boxed into an integer type, an integer with the uppercase I, by the way, the integer class. Because ArrayLists really only support integers, or uh, no, support uh, objects in their individual elements. Okay. Same thing with 41 down here. That will get auto-boxed into a, um, an integer class type there. And then, of course, you can see I'm doing a new string builder here with, um, you know, the string literal Dan. Okay, so then if we do a system out print line here and display the uh, the object that ref is very that ref is uh, pointing to, they actually did a nice override of the two string method for that object there. So it will display this to the console, right? Hello, comma world, comma 155, comma 41, comma Dan. Okay. So that's basically the uh, the legacy declaration, and then adding you know five elements to this particular array, uh, array list, I should say. In the above example, you can see how easy it is to add new elements to the array list. The array list will automatically grow as you add additional elements. You don't have to worry about the size at all. Now, I'm sure you noticed that when I added the elements, I mixed and matched objects throughout the array list. 155 and 41 actually got auto boxed integer objects before they were added to the array list elements. Now the problem with the legacy declaration is that there is no type safety and the compiler gives us a warning, warning, not an error, when we try to compile the above code. Now imagine what would happen if we loop through each, the, um, each element of the array list trying to invoke the you know, dot append method with this string literal passed to it, right? Let's see if I can get all that in there, right? On each element. The only object that supports the append method is the element with the string builder object. The other elements would crash out, okay? So type safety basically, you know, we run into issues on what's contained where in this particular array list there. All right, so that's the legacy way. Now once Java started supporting generics, we can go into the, the second declaration way, which is I call it the generic declaration because it will support type safety. So the only difference is, is that basically we have, of course, the diamond syntax with the type variable in here, right? And this being the string builder class right after the array list type and then a reference variable. And then new, right, array list. This is going to invoke the array list constructor here, right? But we put the diamond syntax right after the name of the class there, the array list class, and specify um, string builder here. All right, so I'm going to kind of skip down here to um, this little 
to, to this section here before I talk about uh, the ads up here. So in the above example, I use diamond syntax with string builder as the type variable on the array list declaration side, right? And this is the array list declaration side. Um, I also I also used, ooh, I got a couple used there, diamond syntax with the string builder as the type variable when invoking the array list constructor, right? Okay. This lets the compiler know that I only want string builder objects allowed into my ArrayList object. Okay, all right, so up here, uh, I'm just going to invoke the uh, the add method again here, right? And then I'm just going to pass it a new string builder object um, containing whose state contains Alaska, right? That's kind of funny because those are actual states and state. That's a pun I really didn't intend. It just came out like that. But anyway. This string builder state contains Colorado, Florida, Hawaii, so, so on and so forth, right? You get the idea. And if we display this to the console here, uh, this will display Alaska, Colorado, Florida, Hawaii, New York. Okay. Now, any attempt to add a different object type, such as, like, for example, ref.add and then plain old string literal here, which will be a string class, right, will not compile. I have some nice tutorials on beginner generics if you aren't familiar with them. Introduction to generics tutorial. Generics bounded type tutorials, print type parameters tutorial, and generics method tutorial. So the third way is called type inference for generic instance creation, right? And um, here's how it's how it's done. And I'm just going to read this here first before I explain it here. So or, you know, I'll read this as I go. So this example is practically the same as the generic declaration up here, right? But notice how the new ArrayList constructor call, right, this over here on the right of the equals, does not contain a type variable in the diamond syntax. Now the type variable is inferred from the type variable in the diamond syntax from the declaration, right, the left side over here of the statement, right? So they really just saved us a few keystrokes. I don't know if this is really useful at all, but you probably will see this sort of syntax. It was introduced in uh, Java 7 there, so yeah, basically that's, that's the way that is. And, really doesn't. To me, it's just like, okay, you can put it over here or you can leave it out, but basically it just infers it from, you know, what's over here on the left. We could have just as easily put an integer over here. But anyway, that's the third way of, uh, of basically declaring and initiating, uh, instantiating one of those there, initializing. All right, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight this source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the desktop, um, shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop. But if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. All right, let's go and open this up. First thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called Java. Now I already have that uh, folder, but if you don't, I'll create it for you. And use the MD command as a shortcut for that. And change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here, and I'm going to call this uh, ArrayList Intro. Okay, change directories to the ArrayList Intro folder, and notepad ArrayList Intro.java. Go ahead and control V to paste this in or right click and select paste. Okay, so this is just a single class in this particular one here, uh, list intro, and we have to import the java.util.star because basically the, um, the array list class sits in, in this particular um, package definition there, right? So just don't forget that, otherwise if you'll get an error message if you try to compile it without importing the java.util.star. And it can't find this particular whatever here. So, all right, so basically what I've got here is I've got three little sections that demonstrate exactly what I was talking about up there, right? Um, the legacy style, the generic style, and the inference style, we'll call it there, right? So let's go ahead and just run this here, and then we'll just go over it line by line there. So actually, let's clear our screen, Java C to compile this. And here's what I was talking about with warning, right? So note, ArrayListIntro.java uses unchecked or unsafe operations. 
and recompile with blah, blah, blah for details. Right? And that's what it's saying right here is we're using this old legacy um, you know, declaration right here, which is important. If we took this whole section out right here, we wouldn't get any, any sort of warnings, but that's what it's, that's what it's telling us. It's not an error. It, um, if we do a directory here, dir, right, you can see it did, it created the dot class file, which contains the bytecode, so it compiled it just fine there. So that's just what the warning is on that. Okay, let's go ahead and Java to run the JVM, and we want to invoke the ArrayList intro class, and so here's what we get for the first one there, right? We add hello world, we add 155, which will get auto box to an integer, and 41 out of box to an integer and a new string builder data. So you can see when we display this to the console, ref equals hello world 15541 dan. So pretty straightforward on that. The next one here, string builder, right? Um, that'll only take string builder types. So we have to add in new string builders. And by the way, there's, there's other ways to add stuff to the arrays and everything like that. I'm just showing you now um, basic stuff right now. I'll go over all those different methods in future tutorials there. You can add arrays and all kinds of stuff there, all kinds of ways to get information into an array list there. So um, let's say, for example, we try to add a, a string right here. So if I uncomment this line, and I'm just going to save this here, and then I go Java C, compile this here. I'm going to get an error message here saying no suitable method found for add, right? And it has string in parentheses, and then we tried to add this string right here, Utah. And then you're going to see all this stuff come down here, collection.add, list.add, abstract collection.add, abstract list.add, and finally, array list.add, we got string builder is not applicable. Argument mismatch, string cannot be converted to string builder, right? So basically, what all these are is like, um, array list is, is what's called part of the collections API, right? So all of these are basically like um, super classes or super interfaces of the array list class there. Not something you really need to know now. I'll go into a little bit more detail on, on like for example, list interface and stuff like that later on there and collections and so on and so forth there. So, um, but uh, that's basically what all this looks is coming down to. It looks a little scary, but it all breaks down making sense, I guarantee it. So. All right, so that is, that's the type safety version of it there, right? So we can't even compile that because you'll notice this is error. This isn't just some warning here, right? Um, if we do a directory now, right, you can see this is 5.36 p.m. right here. This is 5.34. So it did not recompile the, the Java bytecode there, okay? Let's go ahead and comment that out. <clears throat> Come up here, save this again. Let's recompile it now that we got it back and going. And we get our warning, not an error. You don't see anything that says about error right here. So we can, and if we do a directory there, right, you can see now we've got the, the bytecode recompiled there. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and run this. And we're back to that. All right. Um, and then this is just like the, uh, the inference way here, right, where basically we've left the diamond syntax empty over here when invoking the constructor, and it will infer the integer class here. So we can add, you know, new integer 41, new integer 82, or we can put in just integer literals over here, right? Here's a hexadecimal literal. But autoboxing will turn all this stuff into actual, you know, integer classes uh, before it adds them as elements here, okay? So that's what we end up with up here. Right, we've got our uh, 41, 82, 54, 1890, of course hexadecimal 42 is equivalent of decimal 66 there. All right, so let's see, uh, what if we were to try to add, this of course is a, a string literal there. So let's go ahead and save this and let's see what we get here, right? Let's clear our screen. Java C, let's compile it, and boom, we get no suitable method for add string for dot add. It's going through all of these things, but you'll notice inside the parentheses it now has the integer class inside of all these from collection, list, abstract collection, abstract list, and now we're down to array list add. Integer is not applicable. Argument mismatch, string cannot be converted to integer, right? Okay, so that's basically what the type safety works there, you know. Um, 
it's really, really a good thing to do. You'll probably see a lot of legacy code around here that has that has these sort of declarations, but those are very dangerous. They lead to all kinds of bugs and stuff in the code. Much better to use the generic syntax there. I'm a fan of this particular declaration style myself. You know, just to see this over on the right-hand side over there, at least I know, you know, exactly what's going in there right away just by looking at it. I don't think this really saves anything. You still have to go back here and look at what, a, you know, what it's being inferred in here, right? So, um, to me, it's just, uh, this is my favorite here, you know, eh, to each their own, but that's that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, close out of that, and leave you guys with some final thoughts there. So stay tuned to my channel as I'll be going over all of the ArrayList constructors and methods in future tutorials. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.